Hi everyone, welcome to the next video. This is going to be minerals in five minutes or less. Here we go. Minerals are the building blocks of rocks. There are about 4,000 of them and each of them have their own chemical formula and their own structure. In order to be a mineral, it has to meet five characteristics. It has to be a solid. It has to be inorganic, meaning it was never alive at any point. It has to have an orderly internal structure. This means that it has to have some sort of pattern in the atoms, the way they're lined up. The mineral has to be formed naturally. It can never have been man-made, and it has to have a definite chemical composition, which means like a formula. Minerals have crystal structures, and it gives them unique shapes. There are a lot of different structures, and we use x-rays to be able to sort of help us identify what the structures are inside of the mineral. We use our mineral ID chart here to get a lot of information off of it, so we're going to talk about that. The first thing that you can do to identify a mineral is to look at its color, but it's kind of bad because there's so many minerals that have the same color and there's also minerals that have tons of different colors of the same mineral. So it's not a reliable method to, to figure out what the mineral is. These four minerals are all white and they're all different. This mineral is all calcite and it's got a lot of different colors, so not good. The first test we did is the streak test. This is going to be when you take the mineral and you put a streak down a ceramic plate and the powder that comes off is the real color of the mineral. So some minerals have a streak that's not the same color as the actual mineral, like these. So the powder on the plate is the exact, is the actual color of the mineral. Is the actual color of the mineral, not the color of the actual mineral. So this mineral is not gold, it's black or grayish. That mineral is not metal uh, metallic silver, it's red. The next test you could do is the luster test. So this is how light reflects off the surface of the mineral. It could either be metallic or non-metallic. If it looks like a piece of metal, it's metallic. If it doesn't, it's non-metallic. And that's located on the left side of the chart you can see here. The hardness scale, this is to do with how resistant the mineral is to being scratched. A 10 out of 10 is the strongest and a 1 out of 10 is the softest and they can scratch any number less than them or equal to. So for example fluorite here on the chart is a 4 so fluorite can scratch calcite, gypsum, and talc and also another fluorite. So it can scratch a 4, a 3, a 2, or a 1. Glass has a 5.5 hardness, so we use glass to sort of test the hardness to see if something's harder or softer than 5.5. Hardness is how packed the molecules are. So we have something like graphite, which is made of carbon, and diamond that's made of carbon. And diamond just has the carbon more packed together. That's what makes it more strong and rarer. We use different minerals based on their hardness to maybe help us drill down into sections of rock that we can no longer get to because if you add minerals that have a high hardness, it makes the drill more powerful. We talked about the minerals can scratch a mineral with high, um, lower or the same number. There's your hardness column on the chart. Breakage pattern is next. It's either going to have cleavage or fracture. Cleavage has one smooth side and fracture means it has no smooth sides. There are a check mark on the chart right here. If it's checked under cleavage, it has cleavage. If it has fracture, it's a check mark on fracture. So here's an example of cleavage with some smooth sides. That's some fracture with no smooth sides. Some minerals have special characteristics like magnetite's magnetic, calcite bubbles with acid, and calcite also has this cool double refraction when you put it above text like that so you can see if it's calcite. There's what it looks like bubbling with acid. And last but not least, make sure you know your mineral chart. We have the hardness column, the luster column, the breakage pattern column is here, the colors, some distinguishing interesting characteristics, there's a lot of streaks in there and other characteristics, what it's mostly used for, the chemical formula, which is called composition, and then finally your mineral name. Alright, thanks for joining me on minerals, good luck, see you later, bye.